<laughs> okay, good morning, everybody. It's uh, Saturday. I think it's the first Saturday in uh, in June. So, hey, we're happy to be here. Actually, it's the second Saturday because last Saturday was the first Saturday. So um, if it's Saturday, that means uh, hey, we're going to spend a little time together um, this morning uh, talking about uh, boards and um, this meeting or we put this workshop together for people who are um, incoming board members. Now, uh, use your little virtual hand. You know where that is down in the bottom where it says more where you can raise your hand. Uh, show of hands of anybody uh, or everybody that's uh, a returning board member, and probably most of you guys, I would think. Wow, okay. Good morning, Connie. She kind of just raised her hand. But she's not, she knows I have to recognize her because she's raising her hand. Okay, well, that's good. Um, so we've got a, got a little head start. Hey, there's Claudia. Claudia. Hi, I'm going to see you later today. Uh, okay, well, hang on a second. There's some more folks coming, and then here's Ted. So hang on. Uh, so we're going to start our session today uh, with a few words from our uh, incoming district governor, Mr. Ted Fagel. And as soon as Ted gets clicked in here, we'll be ready to go. Wow. There's more people coming. Okay, Ted. Let's see. He's joining here. His ah, oh, there he is. Hi, Ted. Okay, you're you're muted, but hey, that's okay. No worries. Now <laughs> Sorry, I'm having technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Hey, we got a good crowd on today. Wow, thirty-eight people on the call today. So uh, go ahead, Ted. Benson, can you hear me? I, you were cutting out on my end. Yeah, okay. you're, you're, go for it. Sorry, I, I, I was in Singapore yesterday morning. Uh, my technology had to kind of be all reconfigured and rebooted this morning, and it didn't want to cooperate with me. <laughs> but uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, delighted to be here and delighted that um, you took time out of your busy Saturday uh, for some incoming board learning and sharing together. Uh, we have uh, an exciting year coming up for us in Rotary. Uh, you see, the, of course, in my background, our annual theme for the coming year, which is the magic of Rotary. You've probably heard me tell the story that uh, Stephanie Yerchik chose this theme because of her work on a clean water project in the Dominican Republic where they turned on the, the water to test it, and then they turned it off again. And a young boy standing next to Stephanie said, oh, miss, do that magic again. Uh, and of course, we know that that magic isn't really magic. It's the hard work, the dedication, the combined efforts of all of us in Rotary working together to make this magic happen. And as incoming board members, you have a very integral role in making that happen, uh, in having your clubs come together, have a set of common goals and purpose, a common set of action plans, uh, so that your club is vibrant and having an impact in your community. Uh, this will be a recurring theme through the year of how, do, how are we implementing the Rotary Action Plan in each of our clubs. <laughs> One of the ways for our clubs to keep moving forward, to keep having greater impact in our communities, for people to have more fun, for us to have a stronger public image in our communities, is to have clear set of goals that we've <laughs> discussed and agreed upon uh, in our board meetings and, and also with our broader clubs. Yeah and that we have unity of purpose, that we know what it is we're setting out to do for the year and we're committed to work together toward those purposes. In our Rotary Action Plan, there are four key strategic pillars. First is increase our impact. Why, why do we highlight that as the first strategic pillar? Well, organizations that survive and thrive over the long term are ones that really understand their why. 
where everybody feels that they have this purpose, that they have this commitment to something that's larger than themselves. And in today's world, I think that's something that most people are looking for more than ever before of what can I do by working as part of a team and having a common purpose to help work, make the world a better place. So what is it in your club that you're going to focus on? What is the why for your club? What is the kind of impact that you want to have as a club? And as leaders of your club, you have a key role to play in that. One, in helping set and determine that, but two, in also getting everybody else in your club engaged and monitoring and having uh, the discussions over time of how are we doing? Are we, are we fulfilling our mission together? Uh, our second pillar is increase our reach or expand our reach. Uh, I hear sometimes from clubs that say, well, we're happy with our club size. We don't really need to grow. So why do we keep harping on we need to expand our reach? We we do this year after year, for those of you who have been in Rotary for a while. And there's a reason we do that. Well, if we continue to grow, we have more resources to expand our reach. We have more people, or I'm sorry, to increase our impact. We have more resources because we have more donations to the Rotary Foundation that come back to our clubs as district-designated funds so that we have more financial resources to do our projects and increase our impact and impact our why. Um, we also have a bigger public image. If we're having more impact in our community, our public image increases, more people learn about what it is we do in Rotary and they wanna come and join and be part of us. Two years ago, you began to hear from our past district governor, Randy Hart, about growing membership and the concept of ongoing attrition in our clubs. And there's data that we can see that every club has a natural set of attrition and it varies from club to club, but there are going to be people who leave your club for various reasons, um, not, not just because they're unhappy, there may be health reasons, there may be moves, to be closer to family. Every club is going to have a certain number of people that are gonna leave every year. So as club leaders, we need to plan for that. We need to know that this is our attrition rate. This number of people on average is going to leave us this year. So how many people do we need to be uh, engaging in our community, expanding our reach to get them to join our club and be part of us? That means we may need to think about doing new and different things to expand our reach. When I talk about expanding our reach in my club, many of my older members say to me, well, you know, I've really already asked all of my friends to join our club. I don't have any more people to ask. <laughs> well, that means we've got to put on our thinking caps and say, okay, how are we going to expand our reach beyond the people that we already know and that we've already asked. How do we get out in the community? How do we reach new audiences? What would we do in order to do that? Our third strategic pillar is engage, and that's enhance participant engagement. So the other key thing about our members is, do they feel welcome? Do they feel valued? Do they feel engaged? Do they feel like they have something meaningful to do in our clubs? And, the, and that we appreciate what they do in our clubs. As leaders in your club, that's all of our responsibility. We often um, in Rotary see people join our clubs and within two years, they're gone. Well, why is that? Well, one, maybe they had, we didn't set the right expectations with them when we onboarded them. But two, and probably more importantly, is they didn't feel engaged. They didn't feel that they had that sense of purpose, of value, that other members in the club appreciated what they were doing. It was clear what they were doing and the value that they were adding to our clubs. So you as, as incoming board members have a key role to play in that. And our fourth strategic pillar is increase our ability to adapt. Our founder, Paul Harris, said to us 
back 100 years ago now, Rotary lives in a changing world. Rotary will have to evolve and change multiple times as the world that we exist in changes and evolves. We, of course, in uh, when COVID hit, were all <laughs> faced with increasing our ability to adapt very quickly because we had that sudden jolt. But even without that sudden jolt, we have to be thinking about, are there new things that we should be trying? Are there old things that we should stop doing? So what should we stop in our clubs? What should we start in our clubs and why? Back when I was the um, club president, at the beginning of the year, I said to my members, let's try some new things this year. Because if we don't innovate and try some new things, we don't continue to expand our reach, to increase our impact, all of these other things. And I said, some of these new things that we're going to try are going to fail. I just want to tell you that right up front. And if they fail, if they don't serve our purpose, that they don't help us move forward, then we'll stop doing them. But some of them are going to work. And some of those are going to help us achieve some of these strategic pillars and help our club move forward. And those things we want to do more of. So I encourage you as incoming board members, it's okay to fail. It's, it's encouraged there to do and try new and different things in your club. If your club has been doing the same things over and over again for the last 20 years, it's probably time to step back and say, oh, is this the thing that we should still be doing? Is this the way we can have the most impact in our community? Is this the way that our members can be the most engaged? Is this the way that people will be interested to come and join our club? Or are there some new ideas, some new things that we ought to try in order to be more attractive? Our incoming Rotary International president calls that being irresistible. And I even have the uh, t-shirt to go with that. <laughs> so she, she, uh, she's dubbed me part of the class of the irresistible district governors for 2024. 25. And that means we're irresistible to prospective members, people that we interact with in our communities, that they see that we Rotarians are having so much fun together, working together, having an impact that they are compelled to join us. And that our existing members come to our meetings, our meetings are fun, they're different, they're dynamic, we do different things. It's not just a, a ritual that we do every week together, that our existing members feel welcomed, valued, and they're, they feel it's irresistible to become a lifelong member or a lifer, I believe, as Benson likes to call us, that you're so committed to Rotary that you know in your heart that this is a lifelong commitment for you. As incoming board members, you have a key role in setting the culture for your club. So helping have that irresistible club and think about and talk about what does that mean to be irresistible in your club? Is your culture um, contributing that today or are there things that you need to change in how you interact with each other or how you do things so that you have a culture that is irresistible? And I'm sure Benson is also going to talk with you this morning about the systems and processes of your club, or what he likes to call infrastructure. That as incoming board members, you also have a fiduciary responsibility to your club to make sure that you have good financial management, you have good risk management, that you have operational procedures, that it's clear to everybody who's doing what, why, when, how and how things get handed off across the different parts of your club. And that you're having the right kinds of forums and meetings together to share progress against your goals and to make changes and adapt. You may need to adapt to during the year as things happen and change. So as board members also be thinking about that infrastructure, what are your systems and processes and how are you managing risk in addition to managing your finances? Um, so finally, uh, I would just encourage you to think about our, our annual theme 
uh, and all of those elements as you go through your training this morning, or your um, learning together of how do we and here in Hawaii, not just make magic, but make magic with aloha. So thank you, Benson, back to you. Okay, that was great, man. You know, we can always uh, depend on Ted for that Whew. motivational kickoff. Okay. Um, hey, let's get let's get to it. So today is um, basically board training for incoming board members. Now I'm looking at the group uh, that's assembled today, and there's people that are on this call that'll have that have more board experience than I'll ever have in my lifetime if I serve for the rest of my life. So some of this is going to be uh, preaching to the choir, kind of, uh, but some of this is going to be uh, useful. So I'm going to click through a couple of slides and my goal here uh, because I'm time conscious is to make sure I can turn the ball over to Nancy at 925. So I'm going to make that I'm going to make that happen. All right, here we go here. So let's see. Everybody can see that okay? So I'm going to give me a thumbs up because once I start into this thing, I uh, won't be able to see everybody. We can see your side slides, Benson, if it's not on full present, okay. mode, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. Let me uh, let me just uh, switch that here. Um, okay. Hang on a second. All right. Well, why don't I just start? I'll just kind of start right here because uh, we're gonna we need to kind of click through this for time. All right. Purpose of the board. Okay, so first, first um, uh, thing we have to understand that that you're the group that basically makes the club move, uh, and without you, it's not it's not going to move. So um, the board is basically empowered to see uh, to manage all of these things. Now, um, some boards uh, do all of these things; they do the administrative, membership development, financial management, project management communication, public relation, compliance, reporting, leadership development. Uh, they're responsible for those things, but they don't necessarily uh, do, do all of them. And so one of the best things that you can do is try to engage more people since the board has such a, such a huge responsibility uh, to do that. Um, so I can't stress more the, the importance of getting uh, the right people um, on the board so that you know, the things that the club needs to be engaged in can can actually happen. All right, let me switch here. So part of the big responsibility is to try to get the shared vision. And sometimes um, it's easier for the board to just sort of act on its own, um, you know, come up with a strategic plan, uh, ensuring things are gonna align with um, Rotary International's goals and objectives. Um, but it's important that that you have time to meet with the club, uh, to get input from everybody um, in the club. Uh, one of the tools that a lot of clubs are, are using is the, the club health check. So the club health check basically is kind of a survey that you can put out to your members uh, that can help them um, or to give you an idea of how things are happening. Uh, or what people are feeling about what's going on in your club. Um, because basically, here's what the club, here's what the board is responsible for. And that's really uh, making sure that the decisions that are being made uh, are representative of what the club wants to do, uh, its activities, its projects, its policies, overseeing budgets, setting goals, and planning events. Now, those of you who are experienced board people, you know that this is basically where you live. This is the things that you do. And so um, Ted was talking about club action plan. And basically, this is it, right? Um, I I believe that the, the board's primary function is to oversee this action plan. Now, in the last five years, uh, we've done a lot of facilitating for uh, clubs want to put together a strategic plan. And basically, a lot of clubs will put together a strategic plan uh, and then they'll just like put it in somebody's drawer. 
So a strategic plan will only work if it actually has action to it. So that term, strategic plan, Rotary is sort of moving away from that and going to club action plan. Because when you say strategic plan, a lot of people think, wow, we got to do a retreat to do a strategic plan. When the reality is, um, <clears throat> it's not really that hard. And this year, Rotary is really giving you a lot of guidance and helping you to put together uh, your your action plan. So, um, <clears throat> Benson, we're not seeing your slides. This is it, we're seeing it, your slides over on the side, but not on the full screen. And it's only got the first slide up. Okay, hang on. Let me see if I can fix this there. Well, thanks. So did you guys get any of that? <laughs> any of that stuff move here? Hang on a second. No, we could read your first four or five slides, but they were over on the side. Okay. Wow. That's that's bizarre. Hang on. What is that? What does that look like? Slide number six. Okay. Can you guys see this? You guys aren't seeing any slide right now, right? No. Right. Yeah, because I'm seeing it on my screen. Okay, let's see. Can you see this slide now? Yeah, full slide okay. looks good. Okay, great. All right, so impact, reach, engage, adapt. So um, Ted was uh, talking about these four strategic priorities. And so there are a lot, because we've been working with these a while, um, you know, when, when, um, when Ted's talking about reach, it's not just trying to reach to new members, it's really also about reaching for new ideas, new thoughts. Um, you know, new ways of doing things. Like uh, Ted was saying, you know, came to his club and say, all right, we're going to try some new things, right? And that's part of the whole REACH concept. Now, we're going to start putting together, um, working with every club to make sure that they have an action plan going forward. Because this action plan is what um, is the primary focus for what the board has to do for this coming year. So if your board is meeting monthly, and I, I would recommend that, or some boards meet less, some boards actually only meet a couple times a year, but if they're meeting monthly, probably one of the first things you wanna do is like, all right, let's take the action plan out and let's see where we are with this. Let's see, you know, are we are we meeting these deadlines? Are we meeting these goals? Are we having the right people accountable for those things? So if you don't do that, um, you know, it's just, if, if you don't have the board overseeing that, it's really easy to just get an action plan and put it in the drawer. And then, you know, you get so busy with all these other things that are going uh, that you sort of lose the direction that the club is going. Um, so one of the things that we're going to try to uh, focus on this year is club experience. Because we know that people come to Rotary, and if they have a positive club experience, they're going to stay in Rotary, right? So the things that Rotary has identified for us, and I absolutely believe this because I see this in, in my own club, is that people, one, have to enjoy the meetings. They have to like the meetings. So, you know, if you have the same type of meeting, uh, same people coming every year, you might think, all right, well, maybe we can we can do a different kind of meeting. A lot of clubs do rotary on the road. Once a month, they have their meeting someplace else. All right, so there's lots of things we can do and we're gonna work on meeting enjoyment. Confidence in the leadership. All right, confidence in the leadership means that, you know, whoever the leader leadership of the club is, um, people have confidence in them and will engage because if they don't have confidence in the leadership, people don't really engage. Uh, personal growth opportunities. Um, we're going to start to do more things like that where, where people want to actually grow as people um, when they come, come into Rotary because maybe they're at the end of the career, their career, or the beginning of their career. They want opportunities where they can grow and expand as a person. Connecting with other people. Like um, in some of the workshops we're doing now, I used to say I started with Rotary because I believed it was a service organization, and it is. And then it advanced uh, through the trainings I was doing. I believe that, uh, that um, Rotary is a leadership organization, and it is. But now 
in you know 10 years of evolution and rotary i believe really that rotary is a relationship organization and we we function uh that's basically our gasoline our energy is the relationships that we have with others and then the last thing is um is meaningful service projects so people come to rotary because they want to connect with people and they want to serve uh, serve other people serve their relationship uh, serve their communities so if we are able to connect people into those two things. Uh, the chances are, um, you know, we'll be successful in keeping those people, and that is um, is basically the priority for what the board uh, needs to be doing. So, with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Nancy now. Uh, she's going to talk about uh, board roles, responsibilities, bylaws, all that. So, go ahead, Nancy. Nance, you're on mute. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Anyway, I don't might not Benson, you're on my side. I don't know if that's just on me or other people too. I gotta take you out somehow. Okay. Uh, okay. Anyway, it's okay. I'll take, I'll take myself out. <laughs> there you go. Well, no, you know, I don't know. No, I have the whole group on this side and well, yeah. where I don't I don't know how that happened. Okay. Well, yeah. let me move I'll, I'll move on along though, because we've got lots to do today. Uh, roles of the board, really important because you're the guiding force for everybody in the decision making and you have legal responsibility. So you you know that the Rotary's got mm -hmm. insurance for that, <clears throat> but you're on a board to be a part of the group, not an individual, not for your own personal agenda and not for anyone else's. So boards are good because it is not a dictatorship. The whole board's there to help check and balance. So if somebody's getting, you know, it's up to you to say, whoa, 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 we got to stay back to what our, our goals are and where we're supposed to be going so that the whole club thrives during a year. So that you're responsible for overseeing the general direction, like, like Vincent just said, what are the goals? Where are you going? Make sure you keep moving forward. Just got, and, and of course, as we've learned and over and over again with COVID, you know, you have to adjust to achieve. COVID was, we all had to adjust and many things weren't done the way we wanted to those years, but we had to adjust to achieve. Same thing like the Lahaina fire. I mean, oh my goodness, those clubs all had plans, right, in July and they've had to completely adjust. So your general direction of the club has to be flexible and ready to make changes. Um, trying to connect with people in your community and to Rotary International. So you've got to make sure that you stay on board and represent your membership and those things. Effective board members are going to be trying to have your composition be the right people. If you find, especially as president or your executive group, if you find that you've got a board member that is really not in sync with everyone else, it's something to discuss preferably discuss it with people in the district, with Ted, your president, I mean, our governor, our different people and see what the course of action. Sometimes that person maybe shouldn't be serving on that board. I hate to say it. I deal with condominiums. That happens all the time. But think about it. you got to have a, a board that's the right mm -hmm. conversation to people. And where is your board going? Your president and, and your executive need to make sure you keep on your roadmap of where you're going. Effective people. Everybody's needs to be doing their job um, and shared vision. Of course, we all try and re re remind ourselves of the vision, but each committee is going to have a different vision. Community service has a vision of what they want to do and youth services has their vision. So you still have the joint vision, but you're, you as a board got to understand you got four or five people, six people, maybe more going in all these different directions, which is all still part of your shared vision. So it's really hard sometimes to keep those together. I also very heavily suggest that everybody have a their 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 second in command. So each of your key key people, community service, youth services, ask those people to select or help them select someone who would be their first in line partner that they stay in communication with in case something happens and they can't come and take care of a project. You as the board members have to step in, are you as the president, but try and have everybody have a, their number one fallback. 
purpose of the governing documents. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm not, I'm not seeing all of the same responsibility. Okay. Um, where you, did you go back to fiduciary responsibility? Okay, refute, I'm sorry. I almost see the whole screen. Okay, separation of duties, your financial people. Make sure you've got someone taking care of your books that is honest. And secondly, that they understand bookkeeping. It is amazing my 45 years in business, how many people, one, don't understand bookkeeping. And they, but they think it's okay. It's no big deal. It's a big deal. So they've got it. You've got to have somebody to, and they've got to have the time to do the work. It's absolutely a job. And then you've got to make sure you have someone that's a check in the balance and you've got to make sure you've got helping get your taxes information out to get your taxes paid on time. Or if you have to go for an extension, you've got both IRS and state taxes and general excise taxes on income that you might get. So you need to be clear on where your where your money is coming from and what taxes you have to pay for it. You definitely want to make sure you've got some kind of a, a tax preparer, CPA, that's going to help overlook all of this if you don't have to pay them to do it, at least a volunteer that knows it or double checks it all. Um, paying all your bills on time. Seems simple, but a lot of people don't do it and it gives Rotary a really bad name if you don't take care of those, those items. Um, Fiduciary responsibility, youth protection. Rotary has a major policy on what to do. If you're dealing with the youth, all of you on the board should review that, know it, and follow it. No exceptions. Doesn't matter that so and so is just the nicest person, and you and he said he could pick up the kids or she could pick up the kid. No, it's two people. Follow that. No exceptions. Really good people do really bad things, right? I mean, we've seen that in the news. How would Catholic priests be what they did? Some of those, isn't that terrible? So no exceptions, always follow those rules. <laughs> Diversity, equity, and inclusion. I think for the most part, all of us in Hawaii think we're we're really in good shape with that because we're just sort of what I call mixed plate. Everybody's happy with everybody. But if you think that that's not going on, then you need to talk to our, I would recommend you talk to our, our district leadership and try and make sure that you can make sure that's cleared up. Okay. Hard to I go into details. Harassment, again, I don't know that we have harassment, but if you as board members think, and sometimes you as board members are getting the feeling about things that the president isn't getting the feeling of, but if you've got that, again, come back up to district and say, we, I think we've got a problem if your board president isn't taking care of it. Stewardship of grant funds. You got a lot of people involved with grant money. There's so many checks and balances, but you got to be participating in it and make sure none of the money is spent in the wrong way. Uh, governing documents are your guides. And then you've got, you want to jump to governing documents. You're going to have your, the laws of the club are going to be your bylaws. If you have a constitution, you might have articles of incorporation. Every club's independent. So you have your own bylaws. And those should help explain your purpose and your structure of your club. Um, know them and follow them. Read them with a yellow marker. You don't have to go crazy over them, but read them so you've got an idea and highlight the things that matter. If if you need to, there are the ability to do redo or um, 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 amend your, your bylaws because they're our constitution. Your bylaws would be your working documents. You want it to be clear and, and somewhat specific, but not too restrictive. You don't want it to say, you want it to say that you're going to select your officers and have them in place by June. But you're, well, I know that the election of people have to be elected by December and that, but then you don't want to say that you must do it by December 3rd at 5 p.m. or something. Don't be too restricted that it makes it hard to follow and comply with them, but follow them. And if they're too restrictive or it's not something, we've never done it that way, doesn't matter that the bylaws say we've never done it, then change your bylaws so you're you're living within your bylaws. Um, you, the board of directors, the officers and the committees, you're the governing document, you are the, the club constitution is gonna set up who has what power. Again, it gets can get confusing 
but you want to make sure that you, that you follow the basic framework of your organization. And then that way there, if anybody's got a complaint or something, you go back to that basic framework. Who's the governing body? It's your board and, and that who has the authority. Again, authority can get to be a really hard thing when there's conflict about something. So follow your constitution and your bylaws on all of those. And board action, understand that when you're the board and you are responsible, the decisions of the board should be final, although it can be, in most cases, can be appealed by the club. So keep your club informed. I, I For many years, I didn't, th I thought, wow, these people just show up once a week. They never really, you know, you go to most meetings, that meeting's called to order, you approve the minutes, you have a financial report. You know, you never do that in a regular membership meeting, right? So I thought, wow, I guess these, you know, it just magically happens. But you need to keep your board, especially now with technology, keep your members informed about what's going on, okay? So that way there, they know what projects are going on and then also what's going on with the money. People get very concerned when a lot of money starts being happening and a lot of money is relative. But anytime people start being concerned, wow, that board, they all went out to lunch and they were drinking cocktails. I wonder if they're using our club dues to do that, you know? Keep your membership informed about what's going on with your actions, your decisions, and absolutely your money. Hey, got constitutional highlights. Am I still that or is that Naomi's turn? <laughs> um, Naomi, are you supposed to take over on this part with regular meetings and agendas and stuff or should I... Uh, yeah, I'll go into meetings. So okay. um, do you want to finish with, um, by, you went through bylaws? I did. I mentioned it earlier, but there's, okay, I'll finish up. Okay, you you start with the four elements of effective club. Okay, constitutional highlights, hold regular meetings. Your constitution is going to, you should be trying to have them at least twice monthly. How you have them is varying with every club in person plus on Zoom, Hybrid, doing both um, Zoom and in-person is really, I think, the future of what meetings are going to become. We just have to have technology easier to deal with that. Um, I guess our constitution allows for the board to cancel up to four regular meetings during a year. You would already have not had any during um, like uh, holidays and that, but you may also ca uh, cancel other meetings if necessary, but you you should not look to ever cancel more than three consecutive meetings in a row. That is not in violation of the constitution. But again, I think some of that happened during COVID because suddenly we couldn't meet in that. So again, adjust to achieve. Annual meetings are supposed to be held during the year to elect your officers before December 31st. I know that not all the officers get elected at that time. Make sure that you have if you don't have everybody filled by then, have it be a full election later, again, to elect that one more position so the membership knows what's going on. Um, board minutes are supposed to be available to the membership in 60 days after the meeting. Again, and now that everything's online, they, it's able to be done. We don't have to mail them out to everybody, but try and have a secretary that's able to get that done. Um, again, we talk about diversity in terms of people, but it's also a matter of diversity among among our community. The more we represent our community, and if our community has a, a variation of, of businesses and professionals, occupations, civic organizations, uh, and so it's all of those are parts of our community. The more we represent that community, the greater our, our, our impact will be when we can do. I tell all my my people all the time, it's not my club, it's your club. You join with us and you bring us the project that's going to help your portion of this community be greater. And let's have our army of members come help with that, with doing those things. Okay, my last screen would be our bylaws. Um, make sure you follow your bylaws. Again, each different boards are going to have different bylaws. So you need to follow those. But um, your membership committee... Um, and, and what's going on with your, your members. So everyone has a different procedures and you need to find out what your procedures are that are required. But then you have other things you add on. 
I would recommend as a club that's been really successful with membership is make, you've got to do the right things. You've got to get their application. You've got to make sure the board approves them and you've got to put their name out there for whatever number of days that if anybody in the membership wants to object, object, they can. Yes. You want them to have the orientation. You want them to do go, go through some kind of a, a process to get exposed to a lot of things, but don't let the inability to have them jump through all the hoops stop them from becoming members. I, I think I, I think sometimes the process, we get so bogged down with the process, we lose sight of the goal, you know? So make sure that we have, you follow what's required for your, your membership, um, your member approval, but don't let that stop you from getting those members that are anxious and willing to, one, be over 18 and have a heart to serve and then have your board approve them and your membership not object. So basically look at your bylaws, look at your documents and make sure you follow the big important stuff. Okay, that was fast for me. <laughs> okay, Naomi's gonna take on now a whole lot of information on our ha having their meetings and agendas and time management. Naomi's good at that. Uh, okay, so you should be seeing a poll on your screen, okay. and we're going into meetings and how um, your board meetings are doing. So want to know, how are your board meetings doing? Is it really good? Are you having too much fun so it goes over time? Are you having too much um, 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 refreshments and things that uh, you forget to cover the stuff? But when you look at how your club can be effective, it's the board who really drives this. And so you think about um, what you need to do for your board to make it a really good experience for all of your members and they stay there, stay a member. So it's, um, it, the DEI is at a B at the end for belonging. So, <clears throat> you know, there are a lot of people that are involved with, um, with the club. You've got your members, you've got your honorary members, you've got their families, you've got, you know, all kinds of people involved. So you want to make sure that we're, we're mindful of their, um, their time and talent and their volunteers. So they've got a lot of things to do. We have a lot of things to do. So it's really important to plan these meetings ahead of time. So determine how now, what kind of board meetings you're going to have the length of time, where is it going to be? When is it going to be? And so everybody can put it in their calendar and be prepared. Um, so you want to have the meetings be as productive as possible and really make use of that time together. So you want to um, uh, put it on the calendar, make sure you have a quorum, because if you don't have a quorum, then you wasted the, pe the time for people who were there. Uh, so just be mindful that we need to really plan as leaders um, these meetings that will drive the club. So have an agenda so people know what's going to be discussed. Send it out ahead of time. If someone is presenting, you want them to be prepared with that information. Um, and sometimes to uh, help the secretary do the minutes, they should try and send those um, notes, the meeting notes, to the secretary so she doesn't have to really take notes. She can just cut and paste the report. Okay, so... Let's end the poll here. Okay, wait, not everybody answered. Okay, so, so let's see what you said. Okay, so it says, okay. Oh, good, we're productive, we're getting there. Uh, some of you need um, some help, some of you having too much fun, but um, that's good. It's good that you're having meetings. Okay, so, Having the meetings is really um, important for everybody to be on the same page, to know what's going on. And the chair of this group can be the president, but it could be also someone else. It could be the vice president. It could be someone um, that can help facilitate the meeting so that the meeting moves along and, and make sure that everybody can participate and then you're accomplishing the, the purpose of the meeting. So time management management is you want to um, make sure again that you're thinking about the time that you have involved you might want to have a minute by minute so people who are presenting know that they have only so many um, minutes to to, um, to uh, present their their presentation 
Um, and, and that's so that you can keep on track and cover the things that you need to cover. So good uh, practice is to have time limits on the agenda. Uh, let everybody know how much time they have. So you, you're keeping to um, the timetable and you're going to discuss the things that you need to have. So if the, the discussion goes off track, you might want to say, hey, uh, let's table that, or maybe we'll have a uh, off, off um, meeting discussion about that so we can plan this out. Okay, so don't schedule things, don't procrastinate, avoid distractions. Um, but you know what? Stay healthy physically and mentally because you need to be there. And if you don't take care of yourself and get stressed out, then um, it's not a good thing. We, we want all of you to be healthy, especially Ted. Ted, we need you to be healthy so we, we can see your face all the time. And you can be irresistible because having um, a club that is irres irresistible and a sense of belonging is what we want to do. So um, we need all of you to stay healthy. So let's talk about getting ready for the meeting. Uh, you have the meeting going along, you have clear decisions to be made. And one of the ways you can have clear decisions is to have Robert's rules of order. So this is like parliamentary procedures. And it basically, you have a motion. So everybody knows what you're deciding on. You have a second, and then you have a discussion. If you don't have a second, you don't have a motion. So it, it dies right there. The motion dies. So someone makes a motion. I move that this, and this is what you're voting on. Um, someone seconds it. So the um, person taking minutes would say who moved in second. Discussion is where you talk about the motion. And this is where everybody has a chance to talk about what the decision is and why they feel one way or the other. So it should be that let's accept everybody's opinion, even though it's um, it might be the opposite of yours. Let's think about it because sometimes they might have a good point, right? Um, so let's discuss it in a in a um, clear way that we're all on the same page. It's not personal. We just need to get things done for the club. Okay. So when you have the emotion, I move that, and then you have a second, um, and then you talk about it, and you need a majority vote of people who there are there. That's why it's important to have a quorum. Okay. And then you you can amend the motion, but make sure that everybody knows what they're voting on. Okay. Um, then you, you don't introduce interrupt the speaker unless it's um, for information. You say point of information or there's something um, they're complaining about. There's too much noise. I can't see your, your Zoom screen or something. Okay, so you want to stay on point with the Robert's Rules of Order. Okay, so majority rules and um, the minority has a right to be heard and it helps to guide the discussion so that the a facilitator will guide the discussion. So you wanna really stay on point and, and take care of this. So remember that the um, chair is not the dictator, it's a facilitator. So we wanna have a good discussion on what we're doing. So the club assemblies, you wanna have a club assembly at least three times a year so that people, uh, your members have a chance to discuss their concerns and bring up issues. So right now, it would be good to have a planning um, assembly. We're talking about the upcoming year, what um, projects, when you're going to have the meeting, um, exchange ideas, and um, and um, really talk about the, the year so everybody knows what's going on. Okay, so if you haven't yet, you should be working on a budget for the year, uh, work on the calendar when you're having the meetings, uh, work on projects, um, do the transition on the bank account at the end of this month, um, and you know, if your treasurer is not hand, handing over the records, um, you might want to be concerned. It may, maybe you want to help them because maybe they're not caught up. And don't forget that there's the learning center and you've got a lot of courses in the new learning center to uh, get more information and uh, help with your skills. Okay. Um, questions? Yeah, um, Naomi, um, Anne had a question in the chat about... Um, um abstentions as a no vote i'm not i'm not sure on that did that do uh abstentions count as no votes um uh they <laughs> yeah no abstention is it doesn't it doesn't exist then so you'd have yes and no so it's not a no vote it just doesn't it doesn't count period but you abstain from something so in other words if 
-hmm. five people voted yes and four people voted no. And all you need is a majority and two people abstained. Okay, so so that then it's five yes, four no. That's all that matters. The two people that abstained don't don't go on either side of that. That's at least in condominium, Robert, the rules of order. <laughs> okay. I think it was uh, Anne was saying that she thought that she saw it in a district rule somewhere. Do you? I I think the district basically follows Robert's rules of order. Correct, Naomi. Correct. Although we don't have it in writing. Okay. Um, but we we do follow the format, and I think if you've got a lot of abstentions, <clears throat> you might want to find out why. So if it's an important decision, you can uh, defer uh, the vote. And, and try and do that. But sometimes they just don't care. They're on the fence. So whatever the majority rule. So uh, it, it you kind of have to feel um, what's going on, what the decision is. Mm -hmm. If it's important and you want everybody's buy-in, you might want to see why they're abstaining. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're going to finish up here the last few minutes to talk about leadership here. So uh, let me get this thing going. Uh, Hang on a second. Okay, so we're talking about um about leadership, and you know, I think one of the biggest challenges that Rotary has at the club level is just really developing new leadership. So you know we're gonna we're gonna work on that uh, pretty intensely uh, this year, um, and it's it's simply because of our belief that that Rotary really is a leadership organization, and that everybody that comes into Rotary has leadership skills. Like you know maybe they haven't exercised them or used them, or maybe they don't know that they have them. Uh, but we've we've seen some amazing people come into Rotary and sort of been background people their whole life and they see themselves as that uh, but when they have an opportunity to lead uh, they take that and the key thing is basically um, to have the club infrastructure uh, that supports a leader okay and so <clears throat> here's here's um, eight things here that we talk about in developing club infrastructure now um, you can you can read those so i won't go through all of those because you know we're sort of limited on time um the the district is going to uh, because RI now wants to go with this three year kind of rolling plan, where um, they would like not just the districts but the clubs to start looking um, beyond just the one year thing and to have basically um, a larger look at what's um, happening in the future. Now my belief is that if you don't have these basic club infrastructure pieces in place, it's really difficult <laughs> to engage somebody to want to lead uh, a club or an organization that doesn't have systems in place, that doesn't have a, an action plan, that doesn't have an engaged board, uh, that doesn't have an active calendar. So um, we just basically got our new, uh, uh, because our, our president elect is gonna be president here uh, in a couple of weeks, and so we now um, put a president elect in place, um, a guy named Frank uh, Manley. Now, Frank's uh, only been in Rotary uh, just a little over a year in our club. But the reason why Frank uh, was willing to take the leadership role as club president a year from now is that he believed that there was sufficient infrastructure in place. And that means the people that were surrounding him to support him so he didn't have to do the whole thing himself. And that's you know, one of the reasons why people are always reluctant about taking roles in leadership is that they really feel like, man, I don't have the time to do all of this myself. But if your club basically has the infrastructure pieces in place to support your leaders, it's easier to engage a leader um, if they if you have that those pieces in place. Um, so as a, as a district, now we're going to start working on that, uh, Ted and Nancy and I, uh, about putting together a plan that will that will go past the Ted's year and Nancy's year and even my year beyond that. So uh, part of what we have to do to engage people uh, to, to want to take leadership um, 
leadership positions in our clubs um, is to take advantage of the programs that we put out. Now we're going to start a basically a leadership 101 um, cohort of people, and we're going to start that in August. Uh, and it's basically anybody, and you can be in Rotary two days and register and become part of this group. And this, this uh, cohort, which is six sessions, once a month for six months, is really just designed uh, to do basic one-on-one -on -one leadership and get some person within your club that has leadership aspirations, doesn't necessarily um, have to be club president, but has aspirations to want to take some type of leadership role. Now, what we've seen is that typically people that want to learn more about Rotary or know more about Rotary, they tend to be more engaged. So what we've seen in our club, we've had a couple of like three members just come on, they're relatively new, you know, a couple of years or less. And we can see that they're they're interested in, in information about Rotary. They want to know more about it. So, so um, coincidentally or not coincidentally, the people that seem to want to know more about it or have a lot of information tend to be the ones that are, are the most engaged, all right? Um, serving on the board is a great place to start um, the leadership journey for, for anybody. So within your clubs, if there's a, uh, you know, a committee that somebody could serve on uh, or be a, be a part of the board, that's a great starting place for leadership. Now, some clubs, <clears throat> and if you look down at number four, um, consider like a leadership circle where they, because their club is small, like Volcano, for example, they have a group of about four or five people who basically rotate the leadership. And now, you know, they still create opportunities for anybody who wants to join that. I mean, it's not like they want to do that for life, but they do that um, to to make sure there's consistency within the club. And continuity in the club is really, really a great thing. And so part of the mindset we have to get to, to get past that is the is our change in leadership every year. So that's a difficult thing because, you know, somebody comes in and they have an agenda and they have it sort of all planned. Uh, a lot of times, um, you know, they want to sort of see it through. So working on it collectively, uh, it might be a new thing, right? So I think one of the things that we have to sort of get past in, in Rotary is uh, the whole, you know, my year thing. So my year as president or my year as district governor or, you know, where where it's about, about me and what I'm going to do as a leader this year, as opposed to working together as a group. So I see like the next... Uh, three years in our district, you know, there's going to be uh, Ted and Nancy and me. And, you know, I want to do everything I can so that we as a district uh, can be successful as well as the people that are that are leading it. So uh, take advantage of opportunities. Um, you know, uh, leadership is a pretty easy thing, right? If the base of Rotary is in our clubs, it's a simple, uh, it's a simple calculation, right? No leadership, no club, no Rotary. So the development of leadership, probably the most important thing we're doing in Rotary right now. So I'm going to stop here because uh, we're just about at the top of the hour. And so, uh, Naomi, you have any uh, wind-up things or last things? Naomi always has announcements. Um, and then anything else you want to say, Ted, as we wrap it up? Well, just a reminder that uh, the recording will be on the district website in the recording tab on the right-hand side. Um, and we can post the PowerPoints as well. And um, I, I, will, I give it to Ted for the last uh, closing remarks. Thank you. And thank you all. Um, great job, Benson, Naomi, and Nancy in um, going over all of this great information. There have been some good questions also in the chat. Uh, I encourage everybody uh, to, if you have board members who were not available this morning, please encourage them to watch the recording of this session, share with them the information from this session, maybe even have a little uh, time in your first board meeting to summarize some of the key points um, so that you're all on the same page. Uh, and don't, don't be afraid to ask questions. 
If you have other questions after this morning, feel free to reach out to Nancy or Benson or Naomi or me, uh, and we'll we'll be happy to uh, answer questions and provide suggestions um, where you may have some unique situation or question that didn't get answered this morning. Um, so thank thanks to all of them, but also thanks to all of you uh, for your time, your attention, and your willingness um, to serve as a board member for your club in the coming year. It's a very important role, and we really appreciate that. So um, that's all I have for concluding. Benson? Okay, folks. Well, uh, thanks for another great uh, Saturday. You know, hours zips by when you're having fun. Um, <laughs> if you, uh, you know, like Naomi was saying, we'll have it posted on the the district website here and uh, please reach out if you have any uh, questions, thoughts, and um, ideas. So happy, have a happy Saturday. Take care, everybody. Yeah. We'll see you in Calgary. Got to yeah. make, make that little commercial. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta remember uh, Nancy's lead on that, right? Yeah. You gotta get started. Get yeah, start Nancy. saving your money. Yeah. Start <laughs> saving your money. Yahoo. You go. Yahoo. Yahoo. Okay. Yeah, that ought to be our, our next one. Yeah, like Yahoo Calgary or something like yeah, that. That's it. Something Yahoo like that. Calgary. Yeah. That'll be our good day. Good day, mate. Right, right, Ted. Right. right. Okay, they folks. Still, still uh, you know, there's a lot. Yeah. Several questions in the chat too. Maybe okay. uh, Naomi Benson, we, you guys can look those over and address some of them. Have real questions that that we might be able to address to everybody or address to the person who asked. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good questions. Okay, so didn't they say Ye Yahoo, Yahoo instead of Yahoo? The Calgary yeah. people? Oh, in the booth, they told us Yahoo. Yahoo? Oh, really? Yeah. But the, yeah. the, the emphasis seemed to be on the who. Yahoo. <laughs> Yahoo. <laughs> oh, like Calgary? <laughs> well, you know, we asked Cal some Cal other, Gary. after that woman told us that in the booth, we asked some other Calgary people, and they said, no, we're we're from Calgary. We've never heard that before. <laughs> they didn't know what she was talking about. No. All right. Well, we so got to we got to make sure we're you know locally appropriate, right? Yeah. So so Nat, Nat, Nancy knows, right? Nancy. I mean, you. Oh there. yeah. Yeah. Giddy yeah. up and go. <laughs> Giddy up. Let Giddy up and go. That might be a good uh, yeah there mantra yep, for yep. you, Benson. Yeah. Giddy, giddy up and giddy go. up and just go and to their Calgary. big famous rodeo is the week right after ours I know. right after our the convention so i don't know if my son will be competing i'm hoping he retires <laughs> but yeah so you're gonna you're gonna stay around then uh probably well, if he if he's gonna compete it's such a he's competed many years as you know those that don't know my my youngest son is a professional steer wrestler he does the rodeo circuit and Calgary has a really famous Calgary stampede. Yeah. I think it's